Hey, we're continuing our series, 2022 Compact Tractor Buyer's Guide. Today we're gonna to talk about some features and options that you might want to make sure that your tractor has or that you might wanna avoid. These are not necessarily which tractor you're gonna get. Sometimes they're tied to a particular model or sometimes they're just an add-on that you might wanna to, uh, to purchase additional from the manufacturer while you're purchasing it and in some cases you can get them aftermarket. Let's get started. Well, every tractor has a three-point hitch, so no, I'm not showing you anything new there. But if you don't get a quick hitch, which is the triangle thing that connects the top link here and the two side links to allow you to quickly connect to a, an attachment, if you don't get that, having these extendable lift arms is really nice, right? With this approach, you can get uh, close to your attachment but you don't have to get all the way back to it and then once you get back there you can go up and down a little bit it works really well this is a great option you most likely have to get this from the manufacturer related here is a rear lift option now on these coyote tractors it's a mechanical option right so you can lift or lower your three-point hitch and all it does is move the lever that's that's up there beside the operator station and this makes it really nice when you're hooking up an attachment as well if you need to lower it a little bit or raise it and you're back here it's hard to reach sometimes on these larger tractors or on a cab tractor like this one now deer only offers this on their larger tractors i believe the four and five series is the first place you can get it and it's more electronic controlled uh switches up here on the the, the rear of the fender. Uh, I actually like this because this is offered even down on the CX series, which is a 25 horsepower, pretty small frame tractor. I, I really like this feature. Look for it. Rear hydraulics. It's best, in my opinion, to get the rear hydraulics that are offered by the manufacturer. If you'll notice this one right here, it's well integrated into the tractor. Of course, Summit Hydraulics is a place to go to get aftermarket hydraulics and I really like those too and I especially like them when they're providing hydraulics that are not offered by the manufacturer. That's what you've seen us show several times on the channel. So summithydraulics.com for that. Use coupon code TTWT for 5%. But if you're buying a tractor and they offer rear hydraulic valves, go ahead and get them. Likewise, get the Power Beyond kit because you may find a need for that. You may want to add some additional Summit Hydraulics. This tractor has some fancy telescoping anti-sway bars, I think you might call them. You put it to the width you need it and then you can see that there will be some hole match up here. There's also a slotted hole that will give you some degree of flexibility there. These are nicer than the turnbuckles that I have on a lot of my little tractors. Uh, so if you have an option to get those, I would highly recommend it. Over here on this lift arm, we have a crank up version. Now this one's good and tough. The one I have on the LX3310 Kubota is not so tough. Uh, I, I really like this one and it makes it much easier to level out your three point hitch. Or this is kind of a poor man's uh, tilt kit, right? so that you can tilt your box blade or angle blade. Very nice feature there. A feature that I like is what we call auto throttle. Uh, it's marketed by different names. Um, Coyote offers it as, I believe they call linked pedal, which would not be my first choice for this name, but they mean linking this pedal to the throttle such that when you press down on the pedal, the throttle increases, right? Same on forward or reverse. I think Deere calls it e-throttle. I don't know what some of the other manufacturers call it, but I think it's a nice feature. One thing I want is to be able to turn that off and on. Sometimes it's very, very nice. Other times it's, it's not helpful. It's not what you want. Usually the way this works is you use your hand throttle to set your minimum throttle. So that sets your minimum RPM. And then when you press the pedal down beyond that point, it will increase the RPM, and then if you let off, it brings it back to this setting. I really like that feature. Hey, while we're here, this particular tractor has the joystick back here near the fender, okay? 
Sometimes they have them up on the loader itself. Personal opinion here, but I much prefer it on the fender. I just find it easier to reach than having to reach up like this. Or I can also get onto the tractor easier. Notice that this one's not in the way of entering the tractor. Let's go next door, then the one next door has it on the loader itself. Let's check that out. Here we are with the joystick on the loader. Actually, this one's not as obtrusive of some, but it's gonna make it really hard to board this tractor. Oh, there's no step there either. But yeah, it's a little hard to get. Actually, I'm just gonna contradict myself. This was remarkably easy to get into this tractor, much larger than some of the competitive tractors I've seen. But this does hinder the ability to get in, and typically you have to, to reach up here yeah, I would much prefer to, to have that joystick right here. This really was supposed to be a spring 2022 buyer's guide, Christy, but it feels like a winter. It's cold. <laughs> yeah, but one thing I wanted to talk about was the suspension seat. It's very nice to have a suspension seat. The highest end tractors in the mid uh, horsepower ranges here will have an air seat. Uh, not very many. I, I believe uh, the Kubota Grand L series and the Deer um, uh, R series for the three and four R's, I don't know of anybody else that offers an air seat, but most manufacturers will offer a good uh, spring seat with an adjustment like this. It's important. You're going to be sitting in it all day. This seat does not have armrests. I really like armrests, but sometimes it's hard to get, even on a higher end tractor. This tractor only has two forward lights and no reverse lights. Of course, it's got the flashers here, but I really want more lighting on my tractor. Now, of course, you can do this aftermarket, but I really like it to be on the main lighting switch so that I can turn them all on together. So I would look into getting a lighting option on your tractor if they offer it. Now, some of the higher end cab tractors will come with standard lighting and oftentimes like on the Kubota uh, LE or limited edition. For example, the Grand L 3560 LE. That will be their highest end tractor, but it'll have a few less options. And I believe lighting is one of those things that they cut back a little bit on, on that particular tractor. Get that add on lighting if you can. Well, maybe you don't need it if you never work in the dark. I think almost every small tractor now has a foldable ROPS. Make sure that's on your list. You can't get in your garage door, a seven foot garage door with most of these smaller tractors unless you have the ROPS down. I'm sure about this one, you might get this one in there. Um, but make sure you get a foldable ROPS. A couple things on the front loader. Make sure you get this quick attach. Whatever quick attach is offered by your manufacturer, most of these are going to be skid steer quick attach. The Deer is going to be John Deere quick attach. In fact, I don't even know if Deer offers it without a quick attach anymore. But anyway, get the quick attach. You will likely want to put forks, maybe a grapple on it. Oh, speaking of grapple, you'll have to have a, a front third function kit for that. Just like the rear hydraulics, if you can, get it from the manufacturer. You can, of course, save some money if you choose the Summit kit, but oftentimes the manufacturer kit is pretty well integrated, so I do recommend that if you're buying a new tractor. Independent rear brakes is something I would consider on any of these larger machines. You can't get them on a subcompact tractor, but most of the larger machines will have that. So that's one brake to, to break the left rear and the other brake to, to break the right rear. Still, I'm committed to do a video on this to, to show you how to use them and, and their limitations as well as their strengths. I just haven't got around to it yet. I promise we'll get to that. But yeah, if you're getting a little bit bigger tractor, make sure it's got independent rear brakes. We're here with Aaron from Halton Equipment. It's been well, quite some time. It seems like another world since we talked to you last time. It, it is different for sure. Yes, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. Back then, you had a whole row of tractors. Surprisingly, you've got several back here now, but back then you had a whole row of tractors and more behind the building and everything. You were just every tractor you wanted you could get. Yes, yes. At, at that point in time, it was nothing if somebody wanted me to order a uh, oddball or kind of a one-off model or a uh, feature or something of that sort um, but uh, that is that is not the way of the world anymore yeah we drove by last summer one time thought we might stop in 
There was nothing. That's that's about accurate. There may have been about two on the lot at one time. <laughs> and no and you know that's not unique to this particular dealership. If if you've been watching the tractor world or quite frankly, any sort of equipment world, cars, trucks, everybody's really struggling to get equipment. So I wanted to get a little bit of an update. What's it like here in the spring of 22? I see a lot of tractors on the lot. Sounds to me like if I wanted to take one of these home today, I might be able to get one and take it home. If, if you wanted one currently, if I have it on the lot, yes, that's, that's a very, very real possibility. Um, you know, other than installing a uh, aftermarket feature or a, a, a uh, option, something like that, if we have to order something, which uh, could delay the delivery process. But yes, as of right now, about any of these guys that you see would be ready for immediate delivery. But once these are gone, then what do you got? Once these are gone, that is a big question. We're going to see what we get. Um, there's not going to be much. Let's put it that way. Oh it will it will be a scenario that we will get shipping notifications when something does decide to ship. Um, if we get a partial truck, if we're getting one tractor without a loader or a backhoe attachment or something coming this way, um, the future is extremely uncertain. Now you told me that this order that came through right here. Well, when was it ordered? Uh, some of it was ordered in November at the dealer meeting in 2020. Um, 2020, still... a year and a half ago, almost. Yep, we're, we're still catching up from that. Um, it, and it was a blessing that we managed to get this inventory. Uh, they shipped a lot into us uh, between December and January. So, um, but it is, it is leaving fast. I think the summary here is that you've got more equipment that you had in most of 2021. At, at the moment, I don't think we've had this many tractors since probably about the time frame when you came by last Oh time. my goodness, so, um, but it's still gonna be tight. Uh, I, I'm hearing from every manufacturer it's gonna be tight and it's, it's a struggle. Yes, and, and not only that, there will be additions of shipping surcharges. Um, there will be steel surcharges on uh, implements and things like that. And it, it is on top of price increases. So that'll be something that will. So let me just ask a, a, some general questions about that. Um, so go back to say 2019 before, before any of our worlds changed. Would you say the prices are up? I don't want to put words in your mouth. 30%, 40%, 10%, what, what would you just roughly say across the board? It would depend on the equipment. So implement pricing is up. Um, it, it is up ex exponentially. A rotary cutter that I used to be able to sell for $1,200 is now about 18, somewhere in that range. 50%. Yep. 50%. Mainly steel, right? I mean, uh, a lot of the attachments, say a box blade, is mostly steel, it right? Is. So steel prices have, as we know, have gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. And Tractors, you, you think uh, less or more? Tractors, I would say it's less, honestly, at least in the case of uh, Coyote. Um, I, I have seen like a CK2610, you know, I would say over 2019 area, somewhere in there, we may have seen about a thousand to $1,200 jump on the product overall. Um, so to me, that's fairly reasonable uh, considering the situation, considering uh, inflation and, and, you know, the price of steel going up, all that good stuff. You shouldn't have said that, Aaron. All of these just disappeared. <laughs> the moment this video aired, <laughs> thousand or twelve hundred dollars. Uh, that's that's uh, remarkably low compared to what I think everybody else is seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, you know, I, like I said, I don't know about the other brands, but I do know at least in the case of Coyote, it hasn't been as bad as as what I'm hearing from some other. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. Yes, sir. Not a problem. Hey, reviewing one of our earlier videos where we talked about frame size of 25 horsepower tractors. These three tractors, actually these two are identical, I think, but these three have the same size engine. This is the CX series, the next one down is the CK series. A lot of difference in physical size, but the same engine. That's gonna be a, a, something you'll encounter with every manufacturer. Go back and check out our horsepower and frame size episodes to learn more about that and, and just to get a little bit more detail. I'm sure we've missed 
some of the features and options that you might want to select and, and might be important. But we have shown several that I think are important. Just some details that you might not think about when you first go tractor shopping. One thing we've heard here today, if you're wanting to buy one this spring, you better get on it now. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. In the pair, and what did be? In the pair, I can't say it. Independent.